Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and here today I've got some Heart of the Swarm action. It is a ZVT and it's actually between two really cool players so I'm just going to go straight ahead and introduce them. Down in the lower right position we have the blue Zerg from Team Evil Geniuses, it is Stefano. And now his opponent up in the top left, the red Terran player from Icon, it is Nerfy. Now, this basically just means that Stefano is probably the better known player out of these two. Nerfy, though, I think to be up against Stefano, he's got to be doing well. I know at the time of this game being played, Stefano was still in Masters because GM hadn't been released. But he is now in the Grand Masters League, just as he, we would expect. And he's really just winning it up in there. He's pretty high ranked. I can't remember precisely where, but it was a pretty decent. It was top. It was definitely top 20, so he's doing fairly well already, and that's to be expected. He's a he's a top-level pro player, so nothing untoward. In terms of strategy, we are on Belgia, so it's a big, big map. Well, it's not big, big. It's not whirlwind big, but still fairly large. Lots of different attack paths, and that's what's really interesting. I I saw some really interesting games. It was actually, I believe, from... Dignitas' Tefl, where he was up against a Terran player, and he did some great play revolving around the Terran's third, where he put swarm hosts down to the right of the third, and also in some of these multiple attack pods. He basically had three ways Locusts were coming in to really negate the effect of siege tanks and how they could stop them. So that's the sort of thing which this map really lends it to itself. Multiple attack angles, which is just so prominent in Heart of the Swarm anyway, that generally I just think Stefano, in some kind of big timing push, which is arguably where he got famous with his Roach Ling um, well, with his Roachling max out, so, so with something like that, he could be doing some really, really great play, and hopefully we're going to have an entertaining game, and for, Nef for Nerfy, rather, I really, I really want to say Nephi, I don't know why, but Nerfy, I will try and get it right, so Nerfy, he's got the gas, he's got the barracks, could be a quick reaper, could just also be a relatively quick factory out, could be going for some widow mines, could be going for some hellions, and that just delays this command center. So no natural command center as soon as we may be seeing in, or we did see back in Wings of Liberty, but instead just a more aggressive playstyle. Stefano though, he went for the hatch, followed it up with a pull, no gas, so it's just being a little bit safer. Some Zergs will go hatch gas pool just to get a quicker speed out and just generally be fairly awesome. But Stefano, no, he's just like, nah, economy all the way. Keeping his options open for a quick third base in case there was a natural there. But as we can see from Nerfy, currently just chucking down that factory. Moving over the barracks, which is indicative that there's going to be a reactor chucked down. Almost certain for it to be a reactor as opposed to a tech lab. Um, we should be seeing that down once, of course, we have the 50 gas out that's required, which should be momentarily. That means that double Widow Mines, double Hellions are a possibility. Stefano, though, I don't think he's going to have too much trouble doing with that. The first two Queens are already on their way out before the factory's even finished, so that means all four, generally, we tend to see, will be out by the time Hellions get over. Widow Mines can be a little bit more tough, so we'll wait to see what Stefano does have in store. For Nerfy, though, Command Center is now coming down, but look how late that is, and specifically look at the work account. 19 to 23 in Stefano's favor already, and that's before we've got the Queens injecting. So this is really a big commitment, getting these Hellions out so soon, or I say Hellions, or this early factory aggression out super early. And it's got to do some damage now, otherwise Nerfy will be behind. Stefano has Overlords placed not really that close. He can't actually see anything. All he knows is the second gas didn't come down. And that is a bit of a critical piece of information because that's how you can rule out things like the starport. So this is all very, very nice. Nerfy following this up with a third CC before his natural was finished. He had to do this to stay in the game economically. Otherwise, he would just fall so far behind. So it's just pushing out with these Hellions. Stefano, he hasn't chucked down a Roach Warren. He's getting the double gas down. No speed yet, clearly, because he doesn't have any gas en route. He's instead just taking a very very early third a lot earlier than you see many zergs go for it and this is really just due to the fact that he hasn't scouted at all what Nerfy's doing and the other slightly concerning thing for Stefano is while he has these overlords holding these pieces of high ground that doesn't give him all of the vision he's there's a lot of area here he can't see Hellions could sneak through past the watchtower just out of the vision range and he doesn't really know anything that's going on he has no scouting information in the slightest so as a result potentially could get caught slightly off guard, but Nerfy going for that mech style play, 
just a couple of Hellions up, but not really doing anything with them yet, so not quite sure what he's waiting for, especially when we see that he switched off the factory and instead built a tech lab there, so he isn't even getting down blue flame or anything like that. This reactor is currently doing nothing. Meanwhile, down at Stefano's side of things, Roach Warren double evolution chamber with the Queen creating a wall off. This is how Stefano can get away with not scouting, and if there are Hellions coming out, they could not get through here, and as such, really, really easy defense. The third would be in a little bit of trouble, but not the hatchery itself, just means you couldn't get drones over there for a while, but with the Roach Warren, a couple of Roaches could pop out and you could clean it out. Other than that, there's not that many pushes that could be hitting right now that would be anything of a threat to Stefano, so loving his playstyle. He's also going for the 1-1 one, one missile attacks very, very early on. Of course, Roach Hydra is very potent against Terran, so are Swarm Hosts if used correctly. Roach Hydra into Viper is incredibly powerful, and I think as Zoplets start to get a better use of Blinding Cloud, that could be incredibly, incredibly strong. So, as we think, Stefano getting down his lair timing, he's got half of his upgrades complete. Meanwhile, for Nerfy, he's just pumping out a lot of tanks. Two tanks at a time, that's going to take him up to three without the need for Siege Mode, clearly. He can just start moving over, he can get into a good position. Could be going for a nice little timing window, but alternatively, he could just sit and turtle up. This is quite a nice turtle position with the placement of this barracks. The only trouble for him is that there is a gap there, so speedlings can run in multiple angles, but now we just see the Nerfy moving out, getting his tanks into a nice position. If he sees up around here, he can cover a lot of area and be fairly safe. Now, other than that, not no upgrades coming out yet from those tech labs, nothing that would really be worthwhile. The armory is about to complete, so we can see the mech upgrades get begun, but for the moment Stefano, all he's doing is really just pumping drones and a lot of them. He's up to 69, uh, sorry, 49 at the moment. He's got a couple more roaches coming out, so this is gearing up for a timing push. It's going to probably end up hitting, I'd imagine, around the 11-12 minute mark, assuming he's going for a, that nice little push. He does have the 1-1 one, one complete, or will do very shortly. He's also got roach speed, so he's probably going to tie his push up within that, so that's the reason why I'm reckoning it's going to be 11-12 minutes, because that's when roach speed will finish, and that's when he can go for a really really big wave of units but actually looks like he's going to start moving out slightly earlier going to go for close to that 11 minute timing push getting a wave of drones behind this as well just means that his his work supply going to be way way up there already up to 63 hydra's infestation pick coming behind this the 2-2 upgrades sure to start shortly whereas currently for nerfy he's got a lot of tanks here but they're not sieged up this could be a great opening for stefano here he's starting to move forward already and does nerfy know the answer is he does now but those roaches already getting close they need to get within the minimum firing range of those tanks though to try and stop from dealing so much damage hugging up on the tanks immediately and as we can see the tanks just starting to melt currently now most of these roaches are in range still so that means they will get cleaned up but that was a beautiful little timing push there from Stefano he may even get this next tank well, luckily a reinforcement coming in there and picking it off but in terms of the loss tab while Stefano lost a bit more by just 350 resources what he managed to do was kill a lot of the tanks and if you keep a mecking Terran's tank count down they become very vulnerable and as we can see Stefano with that 60 drone mark he's saturated on minerals of the third doesn't want his sixth and seventh or fifth and sixth gas yet because all he's doing doing is pumping a lot of roaches. He's getting the upgrades. He's got the tech with the infestation bed and hydras but not using them yet. Critically doesn't have muscular augment started. Instead just getting a very quick hive. Almost certain to be 100% for vipers because if you start getting some vipers out in this situation a blinding cloud on the tanks just means that they're not going to be able to pick off the roaches easily and you can start pushing through. And as we can see Stefano just relentless with these pressure and just trying to pick off a couple more tanks at a time. Really forcing Nerfy to resupply quite quickly and as such just stopping a critical mass of a mech army being able to get completed. But the other important thing for Stefano is he's seen the third base so he's immediately responded with a fourth hatchery of his own. So this is just keeping him ahead economically, making sure he's staying a base up just as he'd want. The creep spread is also going nicely. Just look at that beautiful animation and this is actually one of the things I think is potentially the most OP change for Zerg is the creep tumors can now be placed on ramps and they grant themselves vision up higher. Do you know how incredibly imber that is? Like you can then spread creep up a ramp without having any vision which you couldn't do in wings and that is that is pretty baller. So as we can see, we've got Nerfy now starting to move forward. He's got a good tank count. He does have the plus one vehicle weapons done, but 1-1 one, one already finished for Stefano. Plus two infantry weapons nearly complete. He's also getting Enduring Locust, so potentially some Swarm Hosts are going to be coming down. The Hellions getting a bit ahead of themselves, trying to burn down that hatchery. They won't manage it, but a good number of tanks 
will definitely force a cancel. There's no way Stefano is going to be able to save that. No, so and just hits the counter button, waits, gets a good wave of roaches coming out, and this could potentially be a tough hole, because while the creep spread's going nicely, there's not too much there, the Hellion's now getting into a good little spot, coming back, gonna force that back, and forcing back the creep spread is a good move, and actually, just pulling back here, I think, is a smart move in itself, because you know you force the Zerg player to produce a lot of units, as shown on screen now. You've delayed their fourth base, meaning that you can be very confident you're on equal bases. The one misread potential, I don't know if the Spire was spotted in the scan. Uh, no, so no scan's been down. Actually, no scanning information from Nerfy at all. And as such, he doesn't know that this Spire's going to be here. And therefore, he's just building these missile turrets somewhat blindly in preparation for Mutalisks. And that is a smart move because Mutas are very strong with their health regeneration in HOTS. And as such, Nerfy just doesn't want that going down. He's also got a Thor in there. And his vulnerability of this army is just against air because he's only got the single Thor at the moment. We've also got a lot of swarm hosts coming out for Stefano. That's going to be contained but firstly we do have a lot of roaches coming up in here and where is the defense? It is nowhere to be seen and the roaches are just going to come and hug up onto these doors, take them out exceptionally quickly and as we can see all of Nerfy's army just desperate to come back but he puts up a supply depot wall off which actually means that he's trapped his own units outside. A bit of a misclick there. A single tank up in the main base is going to try and stop these roaches but it is going to be incredibly unsuccessful. The wall off down everywhere and as we can see this is buying Stefano all the time he could possibly hope for. The production facility is taking a lot of damage. The Roach is in a great position, picking off those Hellions now as well. And as such, this just means that really Stefano, he is in a solid spot. He's also double expanding behind this. The Swarm Host Count getting higher behind it. And look at this, the mispathing. Nerfy just clearly has no idea that this is all going wrong. If we look at his vision, he's sitting there, he's just like, why are my units not going up? And now puts down the Supply Depot wall off, but just... To be honest, so much has gone down here. Look at the production capabilities of Nerfy once that goes down. And it's not even going to die, but it would have completely cut out all of the available production bar two factories. And as such, there would have been no way for Nerfy to come back in. Just great read by Stefano going for that push at that time. I just wish I know what he was actually going to be going for. He's going to go Broodlord, actually. Swarmhost Broodlord. The Greatest Spire just got started. But anyway, that's beside the point. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I hope you did enjoy. It was a cool game. And yeah, like the video, leave a cool comment and subscribe because I get new games up every single day of the week. I'm Maddles, thanks for watching, catch you tomorrow.